Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today I've decided to visit Captain Cook's Museum. That's James Captain Cook. There's a lot of history behind this. The museum is in Stewart's Park, which is in Middlesbrough. It's a place that I used to come to when I was a kid. I remember walking around it and thinking, wow, this place is amazing. I only remember small snippets though. So I'm coming back now. I'm gonna have a little bit of a recap and remember what it's like and really reminisce. So let's go and have a look. Come with me. Our timing's really good actually because it's just about to rain and I don't have a cardigan. So I told you, every time I go somewhere it rains. The first person to circumnavigate the world in both directions. Across the Arctic and Antarctic circles without losing a member of the crew through scurvy, which is what happened years ago. Went all the way around, sailed all the way around. Both so he went one way and then he went back the other way. Yeah. So if any of you are wondering who yeah. James Captain Cook is, and even this very day, I still wasn't overly sure. I knew he was historic, but I didn't know what for. Looking at the history now, he was the first person to go around the world in both directions. So he went around the world, and basically in English, he went back the other way as well. There we go. That's in Gabby language anyway. A disease you get when you don't have enough fruit and vegetables. I keep telling Tim to eat his greens. Come on, bumpies, let's go. I remember the sound of seagulls when I came here. I remember walking through the museum and they were playing seagulls in the background. I wonder if that still happens. I remember it used to be free, but they may not be free anymore. Sure. It's not free to go in here because I've already Googled oh, it. Good. We've got to pay. Mm. Mum's doing a, a baby fish quiz on the way round. <laughs> <laughs> we've got so, one letter. so if you've got little ones, they've got like these little hidden fish that you can, you have to get the letters and fill them in here so you get to find the fish. So have to be told. And we're like, well, if we're doing it, we're doing it all. <laughs> I think Pums is a little bit too young to spot the fish, but hey-ho. Right, we've got the first one. That's not the other fish, is it? Oh. No, that, I don't think that's on the quiz. That's a tricky one there. That's the tricky one. Okay, we've got this. So this is a trick one. She said this is a decoy. So basically, um, they did like a documentary and they were digging and they found basically evidence of things from 600 years ago. So they found like objects and stuff. So they found things like this belt buckle. Um, Tankard. Glazed tankard. What's that? Medieval silver coin found. Wow. That's pretty insane, isn't it, that they found that? Wow. Right, okay. They have like these little quizzes, like for the kids. Can you spot the school teacher? So it sort of keeps them engaged as you're walking around. I think that's really, really good. And this is what I remember as a child coming round here and seeing like these little sceneries, like these old model scenes. I love this. So this is Captain James Cook when he was little. <laughs> and who's Grace Pace? Oh, we had a wife called Grace Pace. Oh, wow. So this is the original gatepost of their house, way back when, and the carving, Jay Cook, is actually in the gatepost from way back when. So he's obviously done that himself, and it is actually there. That's nuts. It's so clear as well. It is, yeah. My God, so he literally sat down and did this, or knelt down. Wow. I wonder if 
one day when you pass on mum your gate post will be a museum <laughs> So, this is a picture of Martin, the old village, and this is what they were digging up on Channel 4 and found objects, which is actually now this park. So where this park is, is where this village was, like where we're standing now, which is pretty bizarre. And obviously this is like a model replica of what it would have been like. So he grew up on this farm. On the list. What is this park called? Stuart's park. Why is it called Stuart's Park and not James Cook's Park then? Yeah, I know. James Cook Hospital, James Cook Premier Inn. Is that his little house? I'll tell you what, it's bigger than mine. <laughs> no, I don't remember that. There's a fish. So mum was just saying that um, to make men to go to sea back in the day, they dragged them out of the pub and were violent with them. <laughs> yeah. Nice. God, I'm glad I weren't born in this era. So the name of Captain Cook's ship was the Endeavour. There was a pub right opposite my granny and granddad's house called the Endeavour. Mum, there's a fish up there. I find that fascinating. Is it just me or is this model of Captain Cook having a bit of a rest, freaking you out? I mean, to me, that looks like a corpse. I know it's like a waxwork, but I think that looks really scary. <laughs> yeah, that's like Michael Myers. <laughs> it's pretty amazing what he did, though. Mum! There's a couple of fish in here, I'll let you find them. I absolutely love this, right? Daily life aboard Royal Navy ships. So it basically tells you their schedule throughout the day. I wonder if people today could hack this, right? So 4 a.m., the sailor's day began. Sleepers roused from their hammocks, change of watch. Cook lit gallery fires. Carpenters, sail makers, rope makers, and coopers on deck to begin work. Five till seven, morning work. Decks swept and scrubbed down using sand and water. So this is graft, man. Mast men polished the brass work. First lieutenant on deck to begin his supervision for the day, hammock slashed and stowed. 8 a.m., bear in mind, I'm still in bed by this point. 11 a.m., captain viewed the blacklist and any men in irons brought on deck for punishment. Oh my God. 12.30, the first ration of grog. Grog dished out. Weekday afternoon spent at work or practicing the use of weaponry. Each man allocated a station for each of the important maneuvers carried out by the ship, including moorings and unmooring, getting underway and manning the yards. 8 p.m. Watch changed. Men go to their hammocks for the night. Lights extinguished around the ship. Four to eight. And they can have a wash on a Sunday. Wow. And put on clean shirts. Wow. We don't know how lucky we are. Then they check them out for scurvy. Oh. 
lights up. So you press these buttons, it tells you who they are. So Joseph Banks. That's him. Keeping it. I don't know what's happening there. Anything moving? I can only see bumps in the reflection. Telescope. Oh, it's an anteater, is it that? But it's not really off. So the lights aren't working, I don't think. It's nice for kids, isn't it? To um, keep them engaged. So, it's like a replica of the boat. It's fascinating. Endeavour means to try, doesn't it? That's the word for to, to attempt. The ship was renamed Endeavour and classed as His Majesty's Bark. So, so originally, this boat was called Earl of Pembroke and it was built in Whitby and it was originally used for carrying coal until it became converted for Captain Cook's first voyage of the Pacific or to the Pacific and then they renamed it the Endeavour and it was classed as His Majesty's Bark. Okay, that's a bit disturbing. <laughs> Burial at sea it was more of a matter of necessity than choice. Sailors accepted it when far out to sea because there was no other option, but bodies were apparently buried ashore whenever possible. Maybe because they were rotten. The dead body was placed in the man's hammock and two cannibals placed at his feet. Um, these ensured that the body would sink and sailors believed prevented the departure sailor from following the ship. Uh, prevented the departed sailor from following the ship. What, you mean like a spirit kind of thing? Um, the sail maker sewed 30 stitches to close the hammock and his last stitch pierced the dead man's nose. This guaranteed that the sailor was truly dead, kept his body in its shroud and sailors believed stopped his ghost from appearing on the ship's decks after burial. Okay, well, they did a very, very good job of replicating it because that's scaring me. <laughs> I don't get scared very easily. It doesn't look a good look, does it? No. So basically, he came home for a year and then went off again on his second voyage. Second voyage. And they built a stronger ship this time that he chose. What did it say it was called again? I can't remember. Are you enjoying this, Bub Bubs? It's like, yeah, fabulous. <laughs> What's it called? Resolution. Resolution. Ooh, Endeavour and Resolution. Very extravagant names. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, it's, 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 uh, to be fair, they didn't give us one. I just said, oh, just I said, can I do it? It was for the kids, I think. <laughs> But I'm, I'm struggling because what kind of place does that spell T I W at the end of it? Do you think that's going to be so important? Benjamin, Benjamin. Took three years to do their second voyage. What a minute. These days, you can get around the world a lot quicker. <laughs> Not quick enough, it's Mum. <laughs> Got one of them in my bedroom, full of 
junk. Ay, ay, ay. I love a good globe. So, this is it in a nutshell. His first voyage, 1768 to 1771. The second voyage, 1772, which is when he changed his boat, to 1775. The third voyage, what boat did he have then? Discovery. What? Discovery. What? There's another ship, Discovery. Oh, right, and that was the third voyage, was it? 1776 to 1779. Was this man ever at home? homeward voyage of cook's crew now he was away longer than tim goes away and there's me moaning on this globe it's quite interesting actually so they've color coded where he went so like on the first one it's in the dark line so he went from plymouth i don't know which way round actually oh no there's the arrow so it would have been the other way so start here he went all the way down here down here Anyway, we could be here all day. So apparently these objects here um, are the ones that were linked to what caused his death. So basically when they attacked him. So this is what we're looking at here. But like all these weapons attacked him. Oh my God. Oh, that's a picture, isn't it? All sorts of knives, clubs. Hmm. Oh, this is nice. Oh, give me a small bag, Mr. Hang on. I greeted him and the men were hurling rocks. They took somebody hostage because they'd stolen a bank. I'm just reading now about his death. So basically, they they were greeted on Hawaiian Islands, um, and then they had a problem with their boat, so they went back to the Hawaiian Islands. But someone on the Hawaiian Islands stole a boat from Captain Cook's ship, like a smaller boat from what I'm reading here. And um, so Captain Cook kept someone hostage to get the boat back. And anyway, along the argy somebody was, you know, um, shot or something on the Hawaiian people's side. So they basically captured Captain Cook and some other people. And it says here, it's pretty shocking really, um, that even after they killed Captain Cook, um, the Hawaiians treated Cook's body in the manner in which they would respect one of their own chiefs. His bones were separated and flesh was seared off and burnt and remains distributed throughout the island. Nice. More of the story. Do not be a sailor. <laughs> I think I'll stay at home. Thank you very much. <laughs> I keep my feet on the ground. <laughs> We're finishing off our Captain Cook Museum trip in the Captain Cook Museum's Cafe with a Americano with oat milk and a cup of tea with normal milk. Mum's having a cup of tea. Mm, it actually tastes quite smooth. Nice. Yeah. And I love these windows. I love these windows because you've got a nice view of the park as well outside. So it's quite airy in here and nice. And they can't see us, but we can see out. That's blackened window from outside. That's always a winner, isn't it? So we could be nosy and who one knows we're being nosy. But you know what? I found the museum. I know that it's weird because when you grow up, things do seem different, but it seems so much smaller than I expected. I thought, I almost thought it was this massive grand museum and it's not. I mean, really, it's only about what, seven different rooms, isn't there, that you go through? No, not even seven. One, two, three, four. Probably about six. Everything looks bigger when you're little and looks smaller yeah. when you grow up, like Scarborough. Yeah. Scarborough looked massive when I was little. And then when I grew up, it's tiny. 
Yeah, it's weird, isn't it, how that happens? But that's why it's so important when you become a grown-up or an adult, if you could call me a grown-up. When that happens. <laughs> yeah. Um, to go back and visit these places, because it's really nice to have that recap, because what you perceive as a child, it's not necessarily how it actually is you have a completely different outlook but it was amazing to go back and see it all and also you take in the information so much more when you're older you're not really interested in the story and the ins and outs but when you're older you read every single detail and it's a true story and it's it's a tragic story um about captain james cook but he's pretty famous in the Middlesbrough area. And like mum said before, everything seems to be named after him. So he's quite iconic here. It's definitely, definitely worth coming in. Like I say, it's cheap to come in. They really theme it well for the kids as well. So they involve the kids in little quizzes and show them around and stuff like that. So it's definitely worth bringing them along. Really educational. Yeah, I thought it was really, really good for the money. I would definitely come again. Oh, and what has he said to us when we... The ticket is valid until Your ticket, how long? You can keep coming back until it, there's a date on it. You can have as many visits as you want up to a certain date. Keep coming back. I don't yeah. think we're doing that from Great Yarmouth. Well, yeah, probably not. But, but that is really nice there, so that really they do that. Deal. Yeah, yeah, that's really nice. And also, they have wheelchair access and they have pushchair access which is really good as well because not all places do have that and there was a sign outside that said that they welcome breastfeeding which I thought was a really really lovely touch so I don't breastfeed anymore during the day but I've been in the situation where you really need to be welcomed and they do do that so that's a big thumbs up from me cater for allergies with the milk they do cater for allergies with the milk which is better than mcdonald's that's telling you something anyway i do hope you've enjoyed this vlog if you have enjoyed it don't forget hit the thumbs up hit the subscribe button and hit that notification bell and then you can see more vlogs like this i'll catch you next time Do you like foam? Cheers. Got a lot more to cram in, you know. Oh, so busy. Well, somebody found the museum interesting. <laughs> <laughs>